Daddy, can I come in, please? My, aren't we polite today? Of course you can come in. Is it all right if I bring someone with me? Oh, you got a friend, have you? Well, not exactly a friend. Well, whoever it is, bring him on in. <laughs> They're welcome. All right, she said you can come in. Hello, lady. Now, don't touch anything, all right? Oh, well, hello there. And who have we here, Arthur? Oh, it's my little sister, Tessa. Mum's gonna have to look after her for a couple of days. You never told me you had a beautiful little sister. I don't. I got her. <laughs> but she's beautiful. Look what a beautiful smile. Betty, don't fall for that. She does it to everyone. Does what to everyone? She smiles at them. <laughs> See? She has a ridiculously gooey smile, puts her head on the side like this, and everyone says, Oh, isn't she lovely? Yeah, well, she is. Tell me such a crumb. Hello there, Tessa. I'm Betty. Can I have a drink? No. Now stop asking for things. Betty has better things to be doing than running around getting me a drink. She has important secretary work to do. Isn't that right, Betty? Would you like some milk? <laughs> well, you wait there and I'll go and get you some. Biscuits are nice. Oh, biscuits. I'll get you some biscuits too. Betty, don't fall for that. She doesn't stop with everyone. <laughs> <laughs> now you just wait there and I'll go and get you some milk and biscuits. Do you like chocolate Tim Tams? You're giving her executive biscuits? <laughs> for Mr. Russell's private stock? Are you mad, woman? Oh, <laughs> What's that? It's a computer and don't touch it. Why not? Because I said so. And whatever you do, don't touch the little buttons with the letters on. I mean, these. Yes, 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 you've done it. You've finally done it. Now you're going to be in big, big trouble, Tessa. <laughs> Here you go, Tessa. Oh, Arthur, you didn't want any, did you? Me? Me? Did I want to know Miss Russell's special chocolate Tim Tams and a glass of cold, delicious milk? No! Oh, that's all right. <laughs> um, there you go, Tessa. Thanks, lady. Mm -hmm. uh, by the way, Betty, I'm afraid that while you were out, Tessa was fiddling with your computer. Fiddling with it, you say? Yeah, and I know how grown-ups hate children who fiddle. Oh, no, she's erased the page I was working on. <laughs> oh, I spent a whole hour on that page. I tried to tell her, don't fiddle, but you oh, know what those girls... Oh, well, never mind. Never mind? Never mind? But... Oh, but... she didn't mean it, did you, dear? No. See, after all, Arthur, she's only a little kid. There's no justice. There's just no justice. <laughs> Huh? Oh, I was just doing a bit of repair work on my bike, Trace. Still not working, eh? Oh, no, so I thought I might as well fix it myself. Is that wise? What do you mean, is that wise? Well, you've never really learned anything about motorbike engines, have you? <laughs> Tracy, I don't have to learn anything about engines. I'm a bloke. There are some things that are instinctive for blokes. They just come naturally. <laughs> like uh, sitting on buses with your legs wide apart? Yeah. <laughs> no, 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 I mean like fixing engines. So what's wrong with it? It's not working. <laughs> Don't you need a more specific diagnosis than that to fix it? I mean, that's a pretty broad problem you're working on there. Well, you just take it all apart, and then you clean it up a bit, then you put it back together again, see? So you're saying it's not working because it's dirty? No. It's just what you do when an engine isn't working. You take it all apart, and you rub it with a cloth, and then you put it back together again. <laughs> and it works? It might. Yeah, it probably will. Yeah, of course it will. <laughs> Wouldn't it be simpler to take it to a repair shop? <laughs> Tracy, Tracy, Tracy. You just don't understand, do you? You can't afford a repair shop. I can't afford a repair shop. <laughs> they quoted me at three hundred dollars to fix it. Mm. Well, it might be something like that. Mm. Hi, kids. How are things? Fine, Dad. Hi, Greg. Ben, do you have to do that here? Well, what's the problem? We've got engine parts all over where I prepare food. Oh, yeah. Don't worry about that, Greg. I've wiped up all the breadcrumbs and stuff. It won't damage the engine. <laughs> All oh, right, right. I'll do it in my room. <laughs> <clears throat> Gee, Jen, you must have copped a fair whack with that hockey stick. Yeah. Why isn't it funny when you hit your funny bone? This is great, Dad. What is it? Oh, I'm glad you like it. It's lamb casserole. Oh. Something wrong? <laughs> Look at this lamb's a bit grisly. <laughs> what is that? Oh, I don't know. Greg, does this recipe have bits of metal in it? <laughs> Get in there. What is it anyway? It looks suspiciously like a bit of motorbike engine to me. No, it couldn't be. Oh, hang on. I wondered where this had got to. Ben, <laughs> I told you not to leave your things lying around where I prepare food. Yeah, I'm sorry, Greg. 
<laughs> you know, I was just about to complain that a casserole tastes a little bit like two strokes. <laughs> I'm glad I didn't. So am I. So am I. Are you missing any other parts? What do you mean? Well, am I likely to munch Jane on a spark plug or a gudgeon pin or anything? No. I don't think so. <laughs> Just chew carefully, girls. Uh, look, if you come across any other bits, I'll need them back, huh? It's like eating a V8 Christmas pudding, isn't it? So, what's everyone doing tonight? Well, I'm going to do some more work on the bike. Early night for me. I was up till all hours last night. Uh -huh. Jenny, what have you got planned? Um, Katie and I are babysitting for Mr. and Mrs. Costello. Can you give us a lift over there? They'll drive us home. Oh, I should be able to manage that. Have you sat for them before? Oh, yeah. They're one of our favourite clients. Oh, well, they pay well, do they? Oh, yeah, that. But they also have some really interesting stuff. Interesting stuff? What do you mean? Well, you know. No, I don't. Well, the best part of babysitting is waiting till the parents are out and the kids are asleep, then having a little prowl through the home. A prowl? What do you mean, a prowl? You know, you go through their drawers and their cupboards and see what they've got. You mean you snoop through other people's private belongings? Oh, come on, Dad. It's a standard babysitter's perk. Everyone knows that. Oh, everyone does, do they? So your clients are aware that you're doing that, is that right? Well, no, you wouldn't tell them. Everyone who's a babysitter knows about it. Well, I think it's appalling behaviour, Jenny, and I do not wish to discuss this any further, understand? Okay. So, we'll hear no more about it. <coughs> so, what sort of stuff have you found? <laughs> ben. Well, she said it, now I just can't get it out of my mind. Well, I'm sorry, I don't condone what she's doing. And if we discuss it with her and ask her for more lurid details, we're giving her a form of tacit approval. Yeah, I suppose so. If, on the other hand, we don't show any prurient curiosity, we won't encourage you to continue with this sort of behaviour. That's terrific, Greg. <laughs> well, it's just basic courtesy, I believe. No, 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 what you said about the prurient thing. <laughs> I don't know what it means, but it sounds terrific. Well, be that as it may, Jenny, I do not wish to hear about this anymore, understood? Yeah, I'm sorry, Uncle Greg. All right, damn it, what did you find? Ah, uh, you couldn't keep it up. Oh, shut up. What's so special about the Costello? Now, hang on, does that mean that it's okay to have this prairie little thing that you were talking about? Oh, no, you shut up too. <laughs> Jenny? Well, there's a few juicy bits and pieces, like sort of instruction manuals, you know? Oh, like home handyman stuff? <laughs> Not exactly, Ben. Oh. But the best bit was under their pillow. Well, well go on. <laughs> well, we found this black, lacy, filmy satin nighty. That's it? Well, that's plenty. How much do you want? Well, oh, Jenny, I mean, it's not exactly earth-shattering to find out that Mrs. Costello wears a lacy, black, filmy, satin nighty. Who's talking about Mrs. Costello? <laughs> there we go, Betty. Coffee. Oh, thanks, Mr. Russell. <laughs> it's funny, isn't it? You getting coffee for me. Well, I want that letter typed up urgently, you see. Uh, which letter is that? The letter you've been typing. You have been typing a letter, haven't you? Oh, I was just about to get on to that. I told you when I gave it to you that this is today's top priority item. Oh, so the other one isn't. What other one? You know, the development application thingy for the second story edition you've been working on. Wasn't that urgent and top priority as well? That was urgent yesterday. Oh, so you don't want me to do it today? Well, of course not. I don't want you to do it again. Again? You did do it yesterday, didn't you? Well, of course I did. Oh, thank God for that. But I can't very well send it out like that. Like what? Well, with all the misspelling and everything. I mean, you wouldn't want people to think you couldn't spell properly, would you? Betty, I can spell properly. I gave you a handwritten draft of that to type up. There was no misspelling. Well, not then, no, but... See, when I type things up, I'll go so fast my fingers get carried away. Your fingers get carried away? Yeah, it's like Star Trek. Um, my fingers go to warp speed and they fall all across the keyboard in a blur. I didn't understand exactly how they feel. And they go faster and faster and then I feel that somewhere there's a tiny Scotty saying, They could have tit no more cup and Betty. She's shitting herself to pieces. Betty, stop! And then, and that's when I begin to transpose. Transpose? Transpose. Transpose what? Letters. See, my, my fingers go so fast that they go right past the right ones and land on the wrong ones. You mean you overshoot your own keyboard? <laughs> yeah, you do understand. <laughs> For a moment there, I, I thought you weren't quite getting onto the concept. <laughs> oh, no. I finally caught on. So this is why you have to type up everything several times. Uh -huh. Wouldn't it be simpler just to type them up more slowly in the first place? Well, that wouldn't make sense, would it? I mean, you said you wanted them urgently. You're all right. I forgot that part. Forgive my foolishness. Let's try and get today's and yesterday's urgent typing done by sometime tomorrow. Would that be possible? I think so. 
I'll make a special effort. <laughs> that would be nice. <laughs> Don't you worry your head about it. <laughs> I'll get right onto it. Oh, good. As soon as I have my coffee. Good. <laughs> <laughs> Mr. Russell, have you met Arthur Sewell's sister? I didn't know he had a sister. Oh, yeah, she's a cute little moppet. <laughs> you know, I always wanted an older brother when I was a little girl. Is that right? Yeah. Terry was the closest I came to it, but... <clears throat> Kelpie. Thank yours. Kelpie. Terry was not a person, he was a Kelpie. He was your father's Kelpie, in fact. And when you were a child, your father used to bathe you together in a tin tub on the veranda. <laughs> What's that you got there? Notes on your childhood. I got Jenny to brief me on every person and animal you knew in Walgett. Uh, that's not fair. It's all here, Betty. There's uh, Denise Clydesdale, the draft horse. An amazing person named Fat Jocelyn who used to yell, surf's up and jump into the water tower to prove it. And then the unfortunate Jimmy Blackwell who was not only washed out of the water tower by the aforesaid Fat Jocelyn, but later competed in the nude luge in the Walgett Winter Olympics. You've got all that written down there. All that and more. So in the future, when you start one of your obscure tales of old Walgett, I'll know exactly what you're talking about. Oh, yeah. And that'll make one of us. <laughs> and the foot bones connect to the ankle bone, and the ankle bone connect to the shin bone, and the shin bone connect to the bow bone, and the bow bone connect to the... Bow bone, the... <laughs> bone doesn't seem to connect anywhere. Hi there. What's new? Hey? Oh, hi there, Arthur. And who's this you got with you? Oh, you know she's still there. I was hoping if it didn't look, she'd go away. Oh, my dear. You must be Arthur's little sister. Uh, so, Ben, what are you doing? Hey? Oh, just guy stuff, Arthur. You know, fixing the engine. Any bit of grease under the fingernails. You want to help? Yeah, can I? Yeah, sure you can. Here, look, um, <clears throat> uh, clean the oil up off this. Right. Uh, what do we do until we clean all the oil off it? We put a bit more on it, then we reassemble it. <laughs> Is that logical? No, it's just the way we do things. Can I do a bit too? No, you're a girl. Didn't you hear what he just said? This is guy stuff. Isn't that right, Ben? Of course you can. <laughs> I don't believe it. I'm glad you're not believe it. Oh, there you are, Ben. Still trying to fix your bike, eh? Yep, me and my buddies here. Oh, hello, and who's this? Oh, that's just Tessa. You can ignore her if you like. Oh, I mind. Ignore her? Oh, how could anyone ignore her? She's so cute. Don't tell her that. She trades often. Oh, come on up. She's gorgeous. Were you this cute when you were young? When I was young? What am I now? Ancient or something? <laughs> I can't believe what's going on in the world. I've got a bad feeling this isn't going to work. You'd save yourself a lot of time and trouble if you just took it to a repair shop to fix it. I told you, Tracy. I've got no money. Well, get a loan. What, from the bank, you mean? That's what they're for. No, it's not a bad idea, Trace. Well, it doesn't make any sense having your bike in pieces, and it must be costing you heaps in bus and train fares. Yeah. Yeah, no, good idea, Trace. Oh, I'll go down to the bank tomorrow. Tessa, now see what you've done? <laughs> That's okay. Accidents do happen, don't they? What? Yeah, and I'm only a little kid. <laughs> <laughs> Why do I bother? Why do I bother? <laughs> What are you two doing in here, embalming bodies or something? We're doing our bit to get rid of the lingering smell of two-stroke in this room. Oh, yeah, right, we'll keep it up before Greg notices. Oh, so how did he go to the bank? Oh, don't ask, Jenny, just don't ask. I don't want to talk about it. OK. Well, don't you want to know how it went? Oh, we're being sensitive to your feelings. Oh, pipe down, Tracy. You know very well that when somebody says they don't want to talk about it, they do want to talk about it. OK, then talk about it. I guess you didn't get the loan. <laughs> Who's telling this story, you or me? Sorry, go ahead. Well, I didn't get the loan. It's hard to say. <laughs> sorry, sorry. Tell us more. Tell us why. Well, apparently the bank wouldn't lend me the money because I didn't owe anyone any money. Does that follow? Oh, yeah, that's how banks operate. If you don't owe any money to anybody, nobody will lend you any money to I owe anybody else. Yeah, but apparently if you're hocked up to the hilt, then they'll fall all over themselves trying to give it to you. <laughs> Call me old-fashioned, but that doesn't seem to make any sense. Oh, it doesn't have to make sense. We're talking about banks here. 
You see, they figure if everybody else is lent you money, they must know something the bank doesn't know. So, so then they think they might be missing out on a good thing. Yeah, but what good thing? Well, they don't know. That's what makes it all so galling for them. So just in case they're missing out, they lend you truckloads of money. Yeah, well, anyway, the end result is that I can't get the loan unless someone guarantees it. Well, why don't you ask Dad? I'm sure he'd be guarantor for you. I didn't want to ask Greg to guarantee a loan for me. It'd be embarrassing. But besides, I should be able to borrow the money by myself. I'd consider lending it to you. Yeah, have you got $300 to lend? I've got over $3,000 in my account. $3,000? Yeah, all well, my birthday money, odd job money, and of course my babysitting money. Well, Jenny, I mean, you know, if you wanted to lend it to me, I'd insist that I paid interest. So would I. <laughs> I charge a nominal rate of 10%. 10% per annum. 10% per weekend. Yeah, forget it, Jenny. Thanks. I'll find the money some other way. No hard feelings. Business is business. However, I know the market. I'm sure you'll be back. Hi, guys. Miss Russell home? Hi, Arthur. Where's your gorgeous sister? Please, Tracy. Oh, I thought you were minding her. She's at the shops with Mum. I'm on day release. <laughs> I want to see Miss Russell. I think he's in the office, Arthur. Hi, Miss Russell. Can I come in? Oh, of course you can, Arthur. Where's this famous sister of yours? Please, Miss Russell. Why does everyone have to keep talking about her? Oh, I see. It's like that, is it? I will mention her no further. I appreciate that. Can I ask you a question? You just did. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I'm sorry, Arthur. Of course you can. Um, I'll close the doors. There's just the two of us. Betty's gone to the post office so far away. What do you want to talk about? About getting old. I figured you're the best person to ask around here. <laughs> Well, Arthur, I'm not so sure that I consider myself as old yet. I mean, I've still got two feet well and truly out of the grave. In fact, a man of my age is considered by most people to be in his prime. Not you getting old, me getting old. Oh, well, that's different. Yeah, I forget it's already too late for you. There goes one foot into the grave, I suppose. Well, I'm going through a really terrible time here, and I figure I must be getting old. Is that right? Yeah, I mean, I'm only 11, and I figure my youth by age has expired already. <laughs> Your little sister's getting it down, is she? Well, everyone thinks she's terrific just because she's young and has a goofy smile. Yeah, that can be annoying. And she never gets in trouble for anything she does wrong. And you do, I take it? Yeah, I mean, I can't get away with nearly as much as I used to. <laughs> I mean, not that I ever tried to get away with things, of course. Of course not. And she's even saying my things. Your things? Yeah, like, when I say I'm only a little kid these days, no one takes any notice of it, but it worked for her. Well, unfortunately, Arthur, that's just part of growing up. Does it have to happen? Well, they haven't found a way to stop it yet, but don't worry, Arthur. Uh, growing older has its own compensations. Yeah, like what? Well, when you're little... Like this up? Yes, nature makes you cute and lovable and everyone makes a fuss over you. Then, as you get older... Like you? That's right. <laughs> people ask your advice and value your opinion. I'm not so sure that's true. Well, one out of two isn't bad, I suppose. <laughs> what about in between those ages? What's good about then? Ah, that's when you're a teenager. So far, nobody's found much value there. <laughs> but listen, Arthur, getting older, you lose some things, then you gain others. There are compensations. Like what? Well, as you grow up, you can uh, get a driver's license, vote, get married, buy a house. My whole life flashed before my eyes just then. It was really boring. <laughs> oh, I've posted those letters for you, Mr. Russell. Oh, hi, Arthur. Why so glum? Arthur's a little upset, Betty. Oh, little sister trouble, eh? She's a millstone around my neck. But, Arthur, have you ever considered things from her point of view? Her point of view? What's she got to do with it? <laughs> Don't you realize she probably looks up to you? Why would she do that? Because you're her older brother. Older brothers always um, are heroes to their little sisters. Yeah? Did you look up to your older brother? Oh, uh, well, of course you did. Uh, we were only talking about him yesterday. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> oh, hey. oh yeah. Um, Terry. <laughs> yeah, we 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 spent a lot of time together when we were little. <laughs> what was he like, Betty? Faithful. Oh, and um, <laughs> and he used to uh, run a lot. <laughs> oh, and he was terrific with the cattle. Oh yeah, yeah. I idolised him. <laughs> so he does not just things about me. That I'm her hero. Well, I'm sure of it. No doubt about it. Yeah. Makes sense to me. Thanks, Betty. Thanks, Mr. Russell. I'm just glad we didn't get to the part about the wet nose. <laughs> uh, 
Hey, uh, hey, 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 Tracy, how about it? I got the loan. So you've now joined the ranks of the world's debtors. Congratulations. Yeah. But I thought you had to have some kind of credit record or guarantor or something. Ah, uh, well, see, Tracy, I realise that the secret is not what you owe, but whom you know. And whom do you know? Well, me, of course. I went to the bank with him. You mean, Jenny went guarantor for your loan? Uh, not quite. You see, I remember one of my babysitting clients as a bank manager. Yeah, so I just walked in and said the magic words, black frilly nighty, and I got the loan like that. <laughs>